I brought that little plaster shepherd into the tin can to be a, a Christmas decoration last year. But when I realized that uh, it was very much like the earliest depictions of Jesus that we have, where he was shown as the Good Shepherd, I decided that uh, he might stay around. And since this is Good Shepherd Sunday, I thought it might be a good day to take him out. In the old lectionary, this is called Good Shepherd Sunday, because Jesus as the Shepherd is mentioned in both the Gospel and the Epistle. And there is, I think, a resonance with sheep in the Song of Songs. The Gospel is from the 10th chapter, according to St. John. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am a good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Although sheep appear as uh, lambs that come up from the water frequently in the Song of Solomon, the most uh, interesting passage, I think, begins near the beginning of the song. Tell me, O thou whom my soul loveth, where thou feedest, where thou makest thy flock to rest at noon. For why should I be as one that turneth aside from the flocks of thy companions? And the answer is, If thou know not, O thou fairest among women, go thy way forth by the footsteps of the flock, and feed thy kids beside the shepherd's tents. I wonder perhaps if the uh, flocks of the singer of the song or some of those uh, other sheep that are not of the fold that Jesus is talking about in the gospel. In the daily office for the past uh, while, we have been reading in the ACNA lectionary at least, uh, from the gospel of Mark. And again and again, the people are flocking to Jesus. If he is uh, on a mountain, they will flock to the mountain. If he gets in a boat to cross the sea, they too will cross the sea. Should he go to a plain, well, they will follow him to the plain. And the sheep are able to find the shepherd by following the tracks of the flock. Now there is a lot that one could say about this gospel passage, uh, but I'm not going to say a lot more about it now. You probably have your own ideas about who are, who are the wolves and how attractive they are. It is interesting, I think, that in the gospel that we have been reading, the passages we've been reading from Mark, there is one place where Jesus goes and he casts out devils from a man who's been possessed for years. And that's the place where people ask him to go away. Sometimes, you know, we are happy, I think, to find a, a wolf. We are happy to be encouraged to keep our demons. But I want to turn our attention to the epistle, which is found in the second chapter of Peter's first letter. Peter, you will remember, of course, is the one whom Jesus told to feed his sheep, to care for his sheep. Dearly beloved, this is thankworthy. Isn't thankworthy a wonderful word? We don't use that one nearly enough. Dearly beloved, this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, 
For what glory is it if, when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if, when ye do well, and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, for do now return unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. I am reminded of the singer of the song who wishes that the beloved might be her brother. And that, of course, brings to mind again the passage from the Gospels. I'm reading from Matthew in this case. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. It is tempting, of course, to quote Psalm 23 or Psalm 95 or the confession from morning and evening prayer where we say we, like sheep, have all gone astray. But in that uh, prayer we say like sheep because we are encouraged by Jesus to become more than merely sheep but to continue in all good works as he has prepared for us to walk in, to quote another familiar phrase from the liturgy. So I want to end this little Good Shepherd video, this song on Sunday video, with not the confession from morning prayer, but from the colic for the second Sunday after Easter. It's a fascinating prayer, I think, for all the images it brings together. It was actually written by Cranmer for the 1549 Book of Common Prayer. And it, on the one hand, recognizes uh, the benefits that have be been procured for us by the uh, sacrifice of Christ for us, and also that having been given those benefits, we are now empowered to do all such good works as he has prepared for us to walk in, so to speak. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given thine only Son to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin and also an ensample of godly life, give us grace that we may always most mercifully receive that his inestimable benefit and also daily endeavor ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen.